Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So today's topic is going to be a nutritional one, uh, and it's going to be the effects of coffee uh, on, on your body, on the human body. Um, so you know, first off, disclosure, I am a coffee drinker. You know, It's actually one of the most popular drinks, uh, certainly in America, but globally. Uh, that, that we as a society kind of have embraced and, and drink. Um, you know, starting off just with some of the basics, they, they, the recommended daily, daily amount is usually about four cups. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe it's about 200 milligrams, 220 milligrams on average of, uh, of caffeine in, in, each, in one cup of coffee. Um, so and that, that can vary quite a bit, you know, with, with brewing techniques and, and concentration amounts and whatever. But um, I don't really want to get into too much of that. Uh, mine was more of just, this is supposed to just be a general uh, information video. Um, so some regions that coffee is grown um, mainly are on like that equatorial belt uh, of, the, of the world. Um, you know, some of the, you know, they, they, they believe coffee originated in Africa. Um, you know, th there were some articles that were just mentioning mentioning that, but that's up for debate, uh, as, as is everything when we're talking about the first drink in history. Um, but basically, some, some countries would be like Ethiopia, Kenya, um, Tunisia, Yemen, uh, some of those, Arabia, are, are the um, specific countries, but definitely Central and South America, Southeast Asia, um, the Middle East, uh, and Af Africa are pretty much the uh, primary coffee growers. Um, and if you if you care to look more into it, look up your favorite coffee uh, brewery, even if it's Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or or something else, and um, you'll see that a lot of them have plantations and then they own a lot of like, fields and fields of cough of uh, coffee beans uh, growing capabilities in in those countries. So that's kind of neat. Um, you know, and then, so I, I touched on a little bit, but then there's brewing types, right? I mean, so there's way more than I'm even familiar with, but you know, the most common one is like the drip coffee where you get a filter, you put some ground coffee in it, um, put it in the machine and then it, it basically will create hot water, which drips over the beans or the grounds through the filter and then into a pot. And then you've got your pot of coffee. Um, there's, there's techniques uh, like a percolator pot where your water is kind of like underneath the ground the grounds and it steams up through it and then drips th through to get get it into a second chamber um, those are the ones that you'll, you'll see on the stovetop or over a campfire and they'll blip and then you can kind of uh, determine uh, the rate of blipping <laughs> is, uh, is is how you determine kind of when your coffee's done or if it's you know a light medium or dark roast um, some of the others are like a French press. A French press is one where you put the ground the grounds in a container, you boil water separately, and then you actually are um, extracting the the coffee properties from the grounds directly. So you're pouring it all in there. The grounds kind of float in in the medium or in the water, and then usually the pressing action is when you press um, a, a, a flat. A flat filter down um, it pushes the grounds to the bottom of the cylinder and then obviously the the, the once water is now coffee because it has taken on those properties um, <clears throat> and then there's there's a lot more uh, popular one um, is a chemex um, and, and you could you could look more into that but uh, so so then kind of the nutritional aspect right so we'll start with the negatives because we'll get them out of the way <laughs> uh, but but they're they're they're, they're real and, and to, if you have um, a pre predisposed or pre medical condition you know obviously you need to take these seriously um, but overall coffee is a pretty safe drink for for most of the population um, but it definitely can it definitely will increase you know heart rate increase respiration rate increase metabolic rate um, uh, some people uh, will will uh, experience GI disturbances, so gastrointestinal discomfort, um, whether it be pain or, or diarrhea, um, or or because it's a stimulant. It uh, coffee is a stimulant, and we'll get into that next. But um, 
some of the effects of, of of that you get from a stimulant can be GI disturbances. Uh, you know, profuse sweating, um, nervousness, irritability, uh, and then and then maybe maybe even the most common one, depending on when you're ingesting the actual coffee, would be uh, insomnia or, or or trouble sleeping. So so those. Those are real symptoms. People experience them and um, keep those in mind. Uh, now, more of the positive effects, you know, kind of go hand in hand. It, um, you know, it improved, uh, well, improved mood is one. Um, you know, it decreases depression. Uh, it increases energy, increases metabolic rate, increases heart rate, uh, things like that. Um, one, one, uh, key component of, of coffee is that it's actually a pretty powerful antioxidant and I've touched on that in, in other videos but um, an antioxidant basically is uh, is a material that fights uh, free radicals in in the body so when cells get damaged uh, they they'll, they'll they can become a free radical or like this damaged toxin in the body and so an antioxidant will will actually kind of go in and either attach to it or engulf it um, and then gets excreted and, and then so it gets removed from the body. So uh, any type of antioxidants that you see, a lot, a lot of times it's like nuts, berries, uh, coffee, dark chocolates, um, and, and more. But, but realize that coffee is, is a way of getting um, kind of a, a pretty you know, immune, immune boosting, you know, uh, positive thing in your body, especially if you're drinking it early in the morning. Um, which most people do, and that's because it gives you increased energy. It has caffeine in it. Caffeine is a stimulant. Um, and one thing about caffeine is, and this not to get crazy scientific, but there's something known as the blood-brain barrier, uh, which a lot of, uh, f that, that's the pharmaceutical world, it's, it's, that, that's their money. If they can create a drug that can cross that, that's usually you know the ones that, that do really well because it's it's really it's a great barrier at protecting us as humans, but there's not many things that will cross that freely and effectively. So, but caffeine is actually one of them. So you ingest caffeine, it goes to your system, can go into the brain. Um, it it usually will um, basically inhibit uh, adenosine, which kind of um, is maybe like a mood will stay stabilizer or or inhibitor. Uh, but by inhibiting adenosine from attaching to a, to a, to a synapse or to, to, a, to a receptor, sorry, um, other, other neurotransmitters are able to. Um, so you've got your like norepinephrine, which is kind of like adrenaline, raw form, um, your dopamine, things like that that are already naturally in the brain. And when they can then bind to a free site, you have then increased activity and increased um, you know, kind of uh, electrical conductivity. So that's just one quick way that, that caffeine slash coffee helps uh, increase your mood and alertness. Um, there's There were some papers uh, that, that mentioned improved memory. Um, so improved activity, improved memory, uh, improved learning skills, things of that nature. Uh, so, so it's no, no, no surprise that you know before finals, before school, before an education, uh, before lectures, before big speeches, uh, company presentations, that we would we would go for a coffee. You know, it's it's very uh, uh, accepted in society, obviously, but but also if it wasn't helping you in some level, you probably wouldn't be as as uh, as quick to just grab a cup of coffee. So there there is uh, there are. You know, research articles out there and, and more um, you know, established documents that you can read and look up on your own that, that will support these claims you know? and, and so that's, that's one thing to keep in mind um, I just got to look at my notes real quick because I, I don't want to forget any of the oh, and then, so the next two points and I'll go through them pretty quick are the one is actually um, fat burning right? so the caffeine also um, will will elicit a response in the body to break down fat cells into their simplest form, which is a free fatty acid. Free fatty acids then get used by the body to make calories, calories are energy. Um, so real basic, one, one, one gram of uh, protein is four calories, one gram of carbohydrate is four calories, one gram of fat is nine calories. So 
anytime we're doing anything act active, the body wants to burn fat because if it burns one entity of fat, it gets nine forms of energy. If it burns one thing of carb or one thing of protein, it only gets four pieces of energy. So, so caffeine aids the body in that by kind of stimulating it to actually target a fat cell, break down a fat cell into its, into its simplest form and then use that. So, um, so anyone that, that is working out physically active on a fat burning regimen, bodybuilding, um, anything like that, realize that you don't necessarily need these stimulants and these uh, jars of powders that aren't regulated by the FDA and can contain uh, toxins and chemicals and things that you don't even know because they don't have to put everything on the label when it comes to that stuff. A way safer and equally as effective option is black coffee. Coffee with nothing in it, no milk, no sugar, no creams, no butters, no oils, just black coffee. Uh, doesn't need to be a lot. It could just be a simple one cup. Um, you know, you can ice your coffee. You can you can have it hot. But the fact is, you're gonna get as much benefit from that without any of the risk of the other stuff in those pre workout powders and things of that nature. So if you're into fat burning, do it safely. But uh, and make sure you're hydrating and eating properly along with a workout plan. But that's one option is black coffee. Um, and then lastly, <clears throat> I do want to say is um, it, it uh, along with the uh, antioxidants, it also is pretty rich in riboflavin, pan uh, panthenic acid, ma uh, manganese, potassium, magnesium, and niacin. So basically those are your B vitamins. Um, <clears throat> and so... And so, so realize that nutritionally, we've it's got um, benefits as well. So, especially, and that, that would be like in one cup. So, if you do have four cups throughout the day, realize that you're getting like about half, or a little bit better than half of your uh, daily requirement or recommended values um, through through liquids. You do want to make sure you eat as much food, get your daily caloric intake. Um, that can be for another video, but uh, this one ran a little bit longer than I would have liked. But realize that. It's uh, something that m a lot of Americans do, and globally, it's something we all have in common. And so uh, it was a video that I figured um, you guys could benefit from. And if you have any comments, make sure you uh, ask me down below, and I'll try and answer them um, the best I can. And if you're interested in nutritional videos, sports medicine stuff, um, you know, in, uh, orthopedic techniques, things of that nature, definitely uh, like the video, subscribe, check out um, the other nutritional video that I have. And, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.